would be very interesting. Because they don't have another pick in this draft, I don't believe. I think it's just 22. That would literally mean they're going to just to try to get LeBron. Yeah, I think there's some other directions they could go in. Yeah. Or maybe they're thinking straight and back. I don't know. Get Zach Eady at 22 if you finish. Just get a big He's body. not getting past Miami, sorry. Um, what? <laughs> <laughs> no, I just saw him photo of the Miami Heat jersey uh, this morning. I was like, oh, they draft him way too high. That's different. Um, the, there are rumor, rumor, there are rumblings that Miami could be open to parting ways with Jimmy Butler rather than extending him. Mm-hmm. Despite what Pat Riley said at his press conference, there are rumblings that Miami could be open to parting ways with Jimmy Butler rather than extending him. Reuniting Butler and Jim, Joel and B could work. Something Fisher mentions at Yahoo Sports. He also notes Demar is a free agent, but that's not an ideal fit. I, I like that idea. But I was telling you, you got to capitalize on the value of Jimmy now. You're getting two years. A team is going to get two years of him. Dude, he Might just well. bought a sixteen million dollar home in Miami. Oh, well, that's a summer home. <laughs> that's a crazy yeah, I agree with you. 16 million on the summer home is crazy. Well, when you're going to make 50. Yeah, I'm saying, when you got it like that, I guess that's cool. Uh, I'm, I'm here for shakeups, man. I love player movement. So if that happens and he reunites with Jordan Bede, I would be excited about it. I still don't think it's a likelihood. But, you, yeah, if you Pat Riley, you're thinking about this 33, 34-year-old player that has not been healthy towards the end of the last couple of seasons, and though he's been amazing for you, um, well, no, not last season, the year before that, he's been amazing for you. It's like, man, do we want to get him a four-year, $200 million contract? At the end of the day, it's just business. I don't think this is a personal decision. They probably really like Jimmy. Mm-hmm. They love Jimmy. Jimmy probably loves Pat Riley and Eric Spolster, but, like, we got to do what's best for us right now. And maybe trading you is the best thing for us. I agree with Derek. I think that's why the Miami Heat have always kind of been in a solid position as a franchise, always kind of in a in, in – a, part where they could go out and improve year in and year in because um, they prioritize the franchise over relationships and players. This is a team that a lot of, you know, they didn't give Brown whatever he wanted. Yeah. They let D-Way go put a bull on it. Yeah. Um, yeah. So the time that Jimmy Butler, I wouldn't expect anything yeah. else differently. They didn't have to bring up a championship team either. Yeah, I mean, I, from the postseason conference that Pat Riley had, you could already kind of get that feeling that, I mean, y'all said all the right things, but... Just the big thing is I feel like, again, he's looking in the mirror and he's understanding like these last couple of seasons, they've had, like going to the finals, that ain't that ain't nothing to kind of like roll over on. But he understands that he had a lot of luck go his way and that's just not how it's going to be. Like he's not comfortable in this situation where he's been to the plan and he's barely making it in there. Like he wants to be there where he's went back to the top seeds and you got to look in your mirror. You got to look in the mirror, especially when all these other teams is getting better. Um, my thoughts on, you know, Jimmy Butler possibly leaving the Miami Heat, or will I rather say that the Miami Heat moving, moving forward, you know, without Jimmy Butler, uh, Jimmy Butler to me really fits the culture in Miami and he is, a very outspoken guy. He is a player that, you know, demands nothing but, you know, the best for himself and his teammates. And he's a guy that is, you know, willing to lay it on the line and sacrifice game in, game out. Um, He's a one-of-a-kind player, in my opinion, despite all of the injuries that he had the past few seasons in his career, um, I think this guy can still play at a high level, you know, and the team that they had been to the NBA Finals as an eighth seed, going to the NBA Finals before playing against the Lakers in the bubble, um, you know, the finish and the end result was the same for Jimmy Butler and the Heat, and I don't think he's happy with that end result you know the end result is to win a championship the end result isn't to be second place and lose that's not the end result for you you want to win championships you want to you know be able to say hey I got a championship ring now I don't want to be down 0203 as an NBA finals record or being looked at as a four and six record that LeBron has or just completely never winning an NBA Finals, period. You want to look at yourself as a guy that can win, you know, big-time championship games and big-time championship moments. You just want to go out there and do, you know, everything you can 
to help a franchise get, you know, a fourth NBA championship, which that the Miami Heat have, they have three NBA championships. The fourth one is one thing that they're missing, you know, and Miami is a land of opportunity. It's not like the Detroit Pistons where it's a uh, small market, you know, team franchise, so to speak. It's not like that. It's more so of a franchise that is up there with the Lakers, up there with the Golden State Warriors, up there with the Dallas Mavericks, and up there with the New York Knicks and the Brooklyn, you know, Brooklyn Nets. It's up there with those, you know, franchises where it's, you know, a free agent, you know, destination. And Miami has the tools and they have the players and they have the coaching staff to put them over the hump and somehow some way they're trying to find their way to get over the hump and you know win championships three is not good enough for pat riley i mean the guy is a real basketball head he knows his games he knows you know his players he knows what they're capable of and he has great iq it's through the roof and he had you know, a great tincture with the Lakers, Showtime Lakers, when you had Magic Johnson, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, uh, and James Worthy, and the list goes on and on. He knows the potential of his players and the potentials of the game that they have to uh, win championships and win big games. So, you know, for the Miami Heat, for the most part, I think they should... Um, get better at, at, at the low post position. If they want, you know, Joel Embiid, I think they should go out there and reach for that. And I think Joel Embiid would be a great fit with Jimmy in Miami if you want to reunite that. But if you're going to move on from Jimmy, you're going to have to say, hey, I need some future picks. I need some first rounders for Jimmy Butler. If you're going to move on and press that button and say, hey, let's rebuild and get younger players you know, here for this franchise so that we, we can build from the draft and then, you know, find leverage of getting a free agent player coming here and uh, winning another championship for us. Um, But it's all, it's all in the mindset, man. It's all in the mindset for you to progress day in, day out. Um. So right now, I think for Jimmy, as it stands for him, which they just said, he just bought a house in Miami, sixteen million dollar, you know, house down there. Um, I just, I just think it's time for for them to say, hey, if we're gonna keep you around, we're gonna keep you around for at least two seasons, and if it doesn't work out, time for the future. Because I don't think the Miami Heat is afraid of the future. I don't think they're afraid of younger talent. I don't think they're afraid of that. I don't think they're afraid to blow it up. I don't, I don't think they're afraid to, you know, say bye to Jimmy Butler. You know, you did you did let LeBron James go and leave the Miami Heat to go back to Cleveland to win that 2016 NBA championship where Kyrie Irving hit a game seven game winning shot to beat the Warriors. No pun intended. And you did let, you know, D. Wade go back to his hometown of Chicago and wear a Bulls jersey, which he was a Bulls fan. Grew up a Bulls fan his whole entire life. But the importance is you don't want to let go a guy that fits your culture. You don't want to let go a guy that fits your franchise. You don't want to let go a guy that is a fan favorite. And if you let go a guy who fits the culture, who's a fan favorite, loves the city and wants to win championships and wants to retire a Miami Heat, you know, player, then by all means, keep him around. But if you let him go, you let him go for the right reasons. And which is the right reasons is to say future, future. Never let that word go out of your mind or out of your soul or out of your, out of your heart. The future really matters. And the play-in, it's not, it's not good for any other team. No one wants to be a play-in team. No one wants to do that. No one wants to be 8th seed, ninth seed, 10th seed. No one wants to be the worst record team where you have to wait in the lottery to get the number one pick, and you don't get the number one pick, and it's just 
ultimately the fifth pick, which is my team, the Detroit Pistons, you don't want that. You know, and uh, tanking and, and, and tanking is for another time. But right here, right now, we're talking about Jimmy Butler and the Heat and where do they go from here? That's what we're talking about. So um, they did strike out on Damian Lillard. I'm going to throw that out there. But in the meantime, between time, let me know your thoughts on uh, what the Miami Heat should do with Jimmy Butler. Should they keep him around or should they let him go? Uh, let me know in the comment section. Make sure you like, share, subscribe. I'm at 216 subscribers. It's your boy, Chicken Nugget King, 586. Here in the mix, I'm out. Peace.